Radio repeaters are a great way to increase range drastically. They simply take your radio signal and repeat it, further extending your range. In many cases, doubling or tripling the distance you can cover. The problem with using not your own repeaters. Many repeaters during a real SHTF or grid down scenario may not be available depending on the way they are powered and also may not be in the right location for you. Another thing to consider is if the grid goes down and we actually do have a SHTF, the owners of those repeaters may change the privacy tones for their own personal use. They might kick you off of their repeaters if they want to use them exclusively, leaving you with no signal or range that you're used to when the grid is working. Welcome to the personal repeater. So there's a couple different repeaters you can buy, but none of them are set up in a waterproof mobile case like the one that I've made here. Here's everything you're going to need to make this portable GMRS repeater box. I really wish B-Tech or Midland or Redivis would make this case with a battery pack already in it. So in this video, I'm going to show you an example of my own personal repeater I put together that can be placed anywhere and run on solar power indefinitely. Okay, so this is my rendition of a personal repeater that can be deployed anywhere and set out and used as your own. Um, this is just in a waterproof pelican type case. It's just called condition one. I am going to leave a link to every single thing you need to make this in the description of the video. So let's get right into it. Let's open it up. And this basically has a Midland MXR10 repeater in it and a battery. And I have some connections running to the outside that we're going to get into in a minute. Let's start with the power source. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. This is probably the most important thing when building this. When I originally ran this repeater, I ran it on a lead acid battery and it doesn't really work out like that. And if you were going to make this case, you couldn't get a big enough lead acid battery to put in this to actually run it for a couple days. You need a lithium iron phosphate. Another reason you need a lithium iron phosphate is this has a BMS in it, which is a battery management system. So instead of running a solar controller or other types of controllers to control the voltage to this, the battery has it already built in. So I can hook this directly to a solar panel with an SAE connection, and which is on the outside. We'll show you that in a second. And you can run this directly off of that. And it won't overcharge the battery because of that battery management system. So if you put a lead acid or some other battery into this, if you hooked it up to a solar without a solar controller or something, it would just boil the battery and kill it. So this is 100% necessary. The LifePo4 batteries are also the best um, for safety reasons and heat. Because this thing, if you have it setting out in the sun, it can get kind of hot. And that's just going to be really important. So another way you can charge this is I fitted up a battery tender to this. This is actually made for a motorcycle. And this is made for a lead acid battery. And this is why it doesn't matter. Because of that battery management system, this isn't going to over voltage it. And this only goes up to 14.3 volts. So the battery management system will actually go 0.1 higher than that. This The battery management system stops it at 14.4. So you can also charge the internal battery with this if you don't have a hook to solar. And this battery will run this repeater under light use for about three days. So this is the SAE connection that I have. And I kind of crudely put uh, silicone around it so it doesn't leak. I'm sure you can make a better connection than I can. But this is the best thing that I came up with to keep it from having water get in it. So the SAE, SAE connection just plugs right in, and I have set this out in the rain, running under solar, so the sun came out and it rained, and I had no issues with leaking or anything. This is a waterproof connection. This is just the actual charger, but my solar panel here 
has the same connection on it. So we can run either the charger or this to it. You can see our frequencies here. It takes in on 467 and it transmits on 462. So your GMRS repeater channels hook right up to this thing with no issues. This is another thing that I wanted this repeater case to be able to do. I wanted it to hook to two different antennas. So this is an SO239 connector. So we can hook a base station antenna to it like this. And this is just a mag mount and all of them are the same. The SO239 connector hooks to all your actual GMRS base station antennas. So I can have one on the roof. I can hook it to this. Or, this is the most important thing I wanted to be able to do with this, if I needed to and I didn't have a way to set up a base station antenna, I wanted to be able to use a radio antenna. And this is another reason I like the MXR10 so much. It's lower power, because this is only a 10 watt radio, and these antennas are rated for 10 watts. I can hook a regular radio antenna up to this, and just screw it on and I could set this case anywhere and it could run for days like that or I could bring the solar panel with it and hook it up and you know I could run it indefinitely but I wanted two different ways to run the antenna so this can just stay in the case if you ever need to use it or a better way to do it is just to actually hook a base station antenna up to this box so this MXR10 from Midland is a repeater with a duplexer. So what that means is I can go right through the repeater and it's not a simplex repeater where I'm hearing myself twice. That's what I really wanted because it's easy to set up a simplex repeater. It's harder to set up one that actually uses two frequencies and doesn't confuse people when they're using it. So this radio will go straight through the repeater to another radio without hearing yourself twice like a simplex repeater. And it's instantaneous, it runs right through without hearing yourself two times. Another reason we choose the Midland MXR10 for using for this application is there's already a duplexer in this so we don't have to run two different antennas on this system. This box would not be big enough to even run two antennas with two different radios on it. So a lot of times when you see those little boxes that hook to two radios, you have to run dual antenna setups on them. And the boxes, are, the radios are so close together that they never work quite right because the antennas are interfering with themselves. That is why having a duplexer repeater is so important. A brief rundown about how this box is set up. Uh, like I said, it's just got a LiPo 4 battery in it, and this SAE connector is screwed onto the top of this battery um, with these screws. The terminals are just there, so this just runs through the box, and then we have our SAE connector um, with silicone on it there to the outside with a cover so I can plug that in. And then the radio, obviously I have my power cord for the Midland. And then this is just wired on top of the battery, just like that. And that can plug in. That runs off 12 volt. Now that you've seen all the components to the repeater box, let me show you a quick step-by-step -step on how to make it. This is the case that I used. It is a Condition 1 waterproof case. And there is a gasket the whole way around it that keeps the water out. You will need to drill two holes in this case. I used a 3 quarter inch drill bit and I just drilled a hole at the top for the SO239 connector. That way when the box stands up, I can have the antenna pointing up in the air if I'm not using a base station antenna. And I use the same drill bit to drill this waterproof SAE connector on the side. And then I just gasket it in with some ultra clear silicone waterproof sealant. So that was the outside connectors. This is the internal connectors. This is just a PL259 cable. It's like one foot, just long enough to reach the repeater in the box. And then it just runs on a dual sided SO239 connector to the outside. This is the inside of the SAE connector. And that would just connect 
to the battery terminal over here that we would have inside the box. Okay, so now we need to fit the foam to the repeater and the battery pack in here. This case has just pluckable foam squares. So just a light cut across the top and you just cut them out to fit exactly what you're setting in. So for the repeater and the battery pack, I went two sheets of foam deep. And then for the little power cord, I only went one. And then I cut a little extra space out here just so I can keep the charger for the system in here when I don't have solar running for it. It can just ride around in the box like that. And then the cables are just under the foam. Okay, so let's put everything back in the box. Okay, so let's go set this up. This is an example of a setup that you would use probably at your house with an antenna up on the roof. That's a fiberglass antenna with a ground plane. So the coax cable just runs down off the ceiling and it's just hooked to the box. And then on a sunny day, this solar panel will probably set further out there, but it would just be plugged into the box too and it would just run it all day. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is my final thoughts. This is just the first version I've done on this. I would love to do maybe a second version that could be a little bit better. In my opinion, this is the most useful repeater you can have. One that can be deployed anywhere with an internal battery system and run on solar. Please feel free to tell me how this can be upgraded or changed. In the future, I may make a V2 of this. Um, with better water sealing or gaskets or maybe a different battery. Um, once I read everyone's comments and they all tell me, you know, what, what, what would make this better. But again, I really wish that a company would just make this case, a waterproof repeater with an internal battery with antenna connections on the box. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.